Be ready. Be fully dressed and have your lights shining. Be like servants who are waiting for their master to come home from a wedding party. The master comes and knocks, and the servants immediately open the door for him. When their master sees that they are ready and waiting for him, it will be a great day for those servants. I can tell you without a doubt, the master will get himself ready to serve a meal and tell the servants to sit down. Then he will serve them. Those servants might have to wait until midnight or later for their master. But they will be glad they did when he comes in and finds them still waiting. What would a homeowner do if he knew when a thief was coming? You know he would not let the thief break in. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at a time when you don't expect him. Peter said, Lord, did you tell this story for us or for all people? The Lord said, Who is the wise and trusted servant? The master trusts one servant to give the other servants their food at the right time. Who is the servant that the master trusts to do that work? When the master comes and finds him doing the work he gave him, it will be a day of blessing for that servant. I can tell you, without a doubt, the master will choose that servant to take care of everything he owns. But what will happen if that servant is evil and thinks his master will not come back soon? He will begin to beat the other servants, men and women. He will eat and drink until he has had too much. Then the master will come when the servant is not ready, at a time when the servant is not expecting him. Then a master will punish that servant and send him away to be with the other people who don't obey. That servant knew what his master wanted him to do, but he did not make himself ready or try to do what his master wanted. So that servant will be punished very much. But what about the servant who does not know what his master wants? He also does things that deserves punishment, but he will get less punishment than the servant who knew what he should do. Whoever has been given much will be responsible for much. Much more will be expected from the one who has been given more. Jesus continued speaking, I came to bring fire to the world. I wish it were already burning. There is a kind of baptism that I must suffer through. I feel very troubled until it is finished. Do you think I came to give peace to the world? No, I came to divide the world. From now on, a family of five will be divided three against two and two against three. A father and son will be divided. The son will turn against his father. The father will turn against his son. A mother and her daughter will be divided. The daughter will turn against her mother. The mother will turn against her daughter. A mother-in-law and her daughter-in-law will be divided. The daughter-in-law will turn against her mother-in-law. The mother-in-law will turn against her daughter-in-law. Then Jesus said to the people, when you see clouds growing bigger in the west, you say, a rainstorm is coming, and soon it begins to rain. When you feel the wind begin to blow from the south, you say, it will be a hot day, and you are right. You hypocrites, you can understand the weather. Why don't you understand what is happening now? Why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? Suppose someone is suing you, and you are both going to court. Try hard to settle it on the way. If you don't settle it, you may have to go before the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the officer, who will throw you into jail. I tell you, you will not get out of there until you have paid every cent you owe. Some people there with Jesus at that time told him about what had happened to some worshipers from Galilee. Pilate had them killed. Their blood was mixed with the blood of the animals they had brought for sacrificing. Jesus answered, Do you think this happened to those people because they were more sinful than all other people from Galilee? No, they were not. But if you don't decide now to change your lives, you will all be destroyed like those people. And what about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? 
do you think they were more sinful than everyone else in Jerusalem? They were not. But I tell you, if you don't decide now to change your lives, you will all be destroyed too. Jesus told this story. A man had a fig tree. He planted it in his garden. He came looking for some fruit on it, but he found none. He had a servant who took care of his garden. So he said to his servant, I have been looking for fruit on this tree for three years, but I never find any. Cut it down. Why should it waste the ground? But the servant answered, Master, let the tree have one more year to produce fruit. Let me dig up the dirt around it and fertilize it. Maybe the tree will have fruit on it next year. If it still does not produce, then you can cut it down. Jesus taught in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. A woman was there who had an evil spirit inside her. It had made the woman crippled for 18 years. Her back was always bent. She could not stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called to her, Woman, you have been made free from your sickness. He laid his hands on her, and immediately she was able to stand up straight. She began praising God. The synagogue leader was angry because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. He said to the people, There are six days for work, so come to be healed on one of those days. Don't come for healing on the Sabbath day. The Lord answered, You people are hypocrites. All of you untie your work animals and lead them to drink water every day, even on the Sabbath day. This woman that I healed is a true descendant of Abraham, but Satan has held her for 18 years. Surely it is not wrong for her to be made free from her sickness on the Sabbath day. When Jesus said this, all those who were criticizing him felt ashamed of themselves. And all the people were happy for the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus said, What is God's kingdom like? What can I compare it to? God's kingdom is like the seed of the mustard plant. Someone plants this seed in their garden. The seed grows and becomes a tree, and the birds build nests on its branches. Jesus said again, What can I compare God's kingdom with? It is like yeast that a woman mixes into a bowl of flour to make bread. The yeast makes all the dough rise. While Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind since the time he was born. Jesus' followers asked him, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Whose sin made it happen? Was it his own sin or that of his parents? Jesus answered, It was not any sin of this man or his parents that caused him to be blind. He was born blind so that he could be used to show what great things God can do. While it is daytime, we must continue doing the work of the one who sent me. The night is coming, and no one can work at night. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the dirt, made some mud, and put it on the man's eyes. Jesus told him, Go and wash in Siloam Pool. Siloam means scent. So the man went to the pool, washed and came back. He was now able to see. His neighbors and some others who had seen him begging said, Look, is this the same man who always sits and begs? Some people said, Yes, he is the one. But others said, No, he can't be the same man. He only looks like him. So the man himself said, I am that same man. They asked, What happened? How did you get your sight? He answered, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. Then he told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed. And then I could see. They asked him, Where is this man? He answered, I don't know. Then the people brought the man to the Pharisees. The day Jesus had made mud and healed the man's eyes was a Sabbath day. So the Pharisees asked the man, How did you get your sight? He answered, He put mud on my eyes. I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, That man does not obey the law about the Sabbath day, so he is not from God. Others said, 
but someone who is a sinner cannot do these miraculous signs. So they could not agree with each other. They asked the man again, Since it was your eyes he healed, what do you say about him? He answered, He is a prophet. The Jewish leaders still did not believe that this really happened to the man, that he was blind and was now healed. But later, they sent for his parents. They asked them, Is this your son? You say he was born blind. So how can he see? His parents answered, We know that this man is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we don't know why he can see now. We don't know who healed his eyes. Ask him. He is old enough to answer for himself. They said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. The leaders had already decided that they would punish anyone who said Jesus was the Messiah. They would stop them from coming to the synagogue. That is why his parents said, He is old enough. Ask him. So the Jewish leaders called the man who had been blind. They told him to come in again. They said, You should honor God by telling the truth. We know that this man is a sinner. The man answered, I don't know if he is a sinner, but I do know this. I was blind, and now I can see. They asked, What did he do to you? How did he heal your eyes? He answered, I have already told you that, but you would not listen to me. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be his followers too? At this, they shouted insults at him and said, You are his follower, not us. We are followers of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. The man answered, This is really strange. You don't know where he comes from, but he healed my eyes. We all know that God does not listen to sinners, but he will listen to anyone who worships and obeys him. This is the first time we have ever heard of anyone healing the eyes of someone born blind. This man must be from God. If he were not from God, he could not do anything like this. The Jewish leaders answered, You were born full of sin. Are you trying to teach us? And they told the man to get out of the synagogue and to stay out. Then Jesus heard that they had forced the man to leave. He found him and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man asked, Tell me who he is, sir, so I can believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have already seen him. The Son of Man is the one talking with you now. The man answered, Yes, I believe, Lord. Then he bowed and worshipped Jesus. Jesus said, I came into this world so that the world could be judged. I came so that people who are blind could see. And I came so that people who think they see would become blind. Some of the Pharisees were near Jesus. They heard him say this. They asked, What? Are you saying that we are blind too? Jesus said, If you were really blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But you say that you see, so you are still guilty.